What's really, really sad, bordering on tragic, is that over a week after All In, a historic milestone event in the history of AEW, and frankly, in terms of its significance, in the history of the professional wrestling business, instead of talking about that, and talking about what that show means, and what AEW is poised to do going forward, and talking about the future, and talking about professional wrestling as a whole, and the positives associated with All In at Wembley, having 80,000 people there. I think over a week later, we're still talking about what happened behind the scenes. I don't give a fuck where you land in your opinions in terms of who's at fault, who's not. That is just a flat out tragedy. It's a goddamn shame. There are a lot of moments in life, but there are certain moments and decisions that matter more. They carry way more weight. And all in was for a variety of different reasons to date the most important, most significant show in AEW history. I don't think it's controversial to say that. You can say, well, oh, what about the first shows? What about All Out 2018? And those are important, but this, you know, you, we know this is a different level. And it's a damn shame that we're not talking about it more. We're talking about bitch behavior behind the scenes. And that's what we flat out call it. It's bitch behavior behind the scenes leading to this. Unbelievable. However, a couple of days ago, Tony Khan finally, finally did something that he's needed to do, frankly, for a long time. And that is fire CM Punk, or should I say terminate his wrestler and employment contract with cause. With cause. Like, that's not an insignificant thing. CM Punk on Saturday fired by AEW. After all of this, it finally happened. And I'm proud of Tony Khan. I'm not going to rip on him for like trying to go out in Chicago in a not great situation and addressing the live crowd before collision on Saturday, you know, doing the, the recorded segment to start the show. I'm not going to I'm not going to poke fun at him for that because he, he, he's not Vince, right? And it's okay. Like, he doesn't have to be Vince McMahon. This is probably a situation where you did wish he had some Vince McMahon presence, some Vince McMahon charisma, because it would have helped. But I applaud Tony Khan for the decision that he made. I applaud Tony Khan for having the courage to go out there and speak live in front of people, do the pre-recorded segment where he talks about the decision and what was done and why. Now, I've seen some people making fun of, oh, he felt he was physically in danger and da-da-da. And we haven't seen the footage or anything. There could be very good reason a guy like Tony Khan, who grew up the son of a billionaire, might have been incredibly uncomfortable in that spot and might have felt physically threatened. I don't know. So I'm not going to sit there and pass judgment on that. However, as much as I'm pleased to see that Tony Khan finally did this, he finally acted like a fucking boss. He finally acted like a businessman, an owner of the company, and said, fuck you, enough is enough, and this shit ends now. I still can't help but think that this is still a lot on him. It didn't have to get to this point. It got to this point because of Tony Khan's behavior of enablement. Plain and simple. As far as the actual backstage incident with CM Punk, like maybe there is a piece there of Punk was frustrated because of the reports that say that AEW didn't have a driver come pick him up from Heathrow and then CM Punk got lost on the way and had to have fans help him figure out where to go. That could be right. You know, and CM Punk's just like a petulant, bitchy-ass dude. Like the epitome of he's not happy unless he's fucking unhappy and miserable. He loves misery. He loves to be 
a fucking whiny ass bitch baby. Period. He's a malcontent. But if you believe the neutral source, and that neutral source, of course, being totally not Kenny Omega, absolutely not Hangman Page, in no way, shape, or form, Nick or Matt Jackson, but if you believe the reports of it was CM Punk that instigated verbally, and then it was CM Punk that instigated physically with Jack Perry, and then it eventually led to a need to almost pull apart with CM Punk and Tony Khan right before their fucking match. You know, fucking A. Like, I'm sorry. I don't give a shit what other blame you want to put on anybody else. And there is other blame to go around. I will talk about it in a moment here. But the fact of the matter is, CM Punk once again went into fucking business for himself. And you really thought that Jack Perry saying that stupid ass shit in his match was such a big damn deal. Oh, look, real grass, cry me a river. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Phil? You're supposed to be a professional. You've been in wrestling for over 20 goddamn years. So you can say all types of shit to get heat, but when somebody else says something to get heat, it's a fucking problem. Like, I realize Jack Perry has an incredibly punchable face and probably an even more punchable attitude. But to sit there in that moment, and instead of prioritizing your match with CM Punk, and the moment of All In, you want to go get into it with this fucking irrelevant dude? What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, anybody that feels bad about how their last week or two have went, just remember... You didn't fumble a seven-figure bag like CM Punk's fucking dumbass did. How stupid. But frankly, I think this whole thing, like CM Punk should have been fired. You can make an argument he should have been fired after the brawl out in the all-out press conference last year. Not a lot of disagreement there. Because everybody looks stupid after that, right? And there's still an element of everybody looks stupid here. I still think Jack Perry should be fucking fired. Because you need to send a message. You've got to lay down the law. Oh, the first defense is young suspension. No, suspension my ass. The way you learn a real fucking lesson is you fire his ass. Stop going into fucking business for yourself. You know it can be a problem with CM Punk. You didn't even try to avoid it. Like, fuck you. You're gone. You don't need him. You can plug some other vanilla ass dude in there and you're not going to miss anything. Furthermore... Firing a Jack Perry would send a message to the EVPs. And that message needs to be sent too. Like, if we're going to keep it real, real, yeah, let's keep it real, real, son. The elite should have been fired last year after the brawl out. Not only are they wrestlers, they're executive vice presidents of the damn company, and they're going and doing that shit, confronting one of the talents? What the fuck is wrong with them? And the fact Tony Khan let everybody ride off with a suspension means there was no real accountability, no real reason for anybody to fear there would be consequences if something like that happened again. Hence why Philip Brooks couldn't just fucking stop control getting out of control. Why he didn't keep himself in pocket. That's on Tony Khan. He's the fucking head motherfucker in charge. He should have acted like it. And as far as I'm concerned, CM Punk fired good. Finally, fuck him. To those saying, well, it hurts their business. And to be honest, CM Punk was the opening act at All In. They still drew 80,000 people. Yeah, it'd be nice to have them, right? But there is something about a diminishing return. There's something about, is the risk worth the reward? And at some point in time, whatever reward you get for CM Punk, ain't worth all the risk of dealing with all the bullshit associated with him. And that's where we're at. But when we look at fucking Kenny Omega, and especially like the Young Bucks, Hangman Page, those guys are irrelevant too. Like, it's pissed people off, but it's fucking true. They were complimentary acts at All In. A show that had 80,000 people there or whatever it was. They ain't that fucking important. They really aren't at this point. And Tony Khan needs to let those guys know that he runs the fucking show and that nobody, and I mean nobody, is bigger than the brand of goddamn AEW. Up to and including Kenny Omega, Matt and Nick Jackson, and Hangman Page, and especially somebody like a Jack fucking Perry, one of their buddies. If they don't like it, they can leave. And it is that fucking simple. There is no defense. 
for a bunch of guys that are supposed to be executives and leaders within the company and have leadership presences in the company to act like this. It's not their company. It's not their finances that are backing this shit. It's Tony Khan and his daddy. They're the motherfuckers in charge. And if I'm Tony Khan, I'm sitting all of them down and like, look, this shit stops. No more. You don't like it. There's the door. If you do this again, I will fire your ass. And you might say, well, they'll just go somewhere else. Okay, good. Then you don't fucking need them. As, as much as everybody wants to think that CM Punk was a cancer, and he certainly was for AEW, he ain't the only goddamn malignancy in that locker room. And all of these asshats should be fired by now for their failure to not act like such bitch boobs backstage. It's not that hard to play along to get along or at least pretend. Like you're in the fucking wrestling business. You should know how to work and pretend. Of course, most of these fucking hacks don't know how to act. They don't know how to work because they never bother to actually do that. And they are lies part of the fucking problem. So it's great that CM Punk was fired. This probably should have happened a year ago. This wouldn't have been a thing at all in. It wouldn't have been a distraction that we've been talking about for a week and a half after the show. If Tony Khan had done more to lay down the fucking law last year. And that's getting rid of Punk and getting rid of the fucking elite. Yeah, I'm serious. If they get out of line again, fire their ass. It's good to see Tony Khan, even though it's late, better late than never, finally step up and act like the boss that he's needed to be for four damn years.